everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Darien Library. Thank you so much for coming out tonight in the gross weather. Uh, this is the only the second installment in our First Look Darien series. And what that is is a series specially designed to spotlight debut authors that the Darien Library staff finds truly exceptional. I would like to just take a moment to thank our friends of the Darien Library. It is because of them that events like these are made possible. So thank you so much for your continued contributions to make programs like these available to the community. Tonight's guest was born in New York City, but spent his summers at his family's house in Georgia Capond in East Hampton. He was educated at Wesleyan University and New York University. He's worked as a roustabout, a lumberjack, a sheep herder in New Zealand, and a congressional aide, and was a founding editor of Forbes.com, and later an editor at Businessweek.com. He lives in New York City with his wife and two children. His first novel, Indiscretion, which is the one we're hearing about tonight, is the way I've been describing it is The Great Gatsby in modern day East Hampton, only sexier. And every single person that I've heard describe this book, sexy always comes out when they start to describe it. Uh, he's joined tonight with his editor from HarperCollins, Henry Ferris. And he's first, our guest is first going to read and then they're actually going to be in conversation with each other following that and then we'll have a chance for questions. So please join me in welcoming to Darien Library, Mr. Charles Dubow. Uh, th uh, thank you all for coming tonight. It's very nice of you to all turn out in this, this uh, beautiful weather. Uh, one thing I do like to mention before I speak, though, is that just um, since you all know, um, I have a slight uh, stutter. So it's not that I've had too much to um, drink upstairs at the, uh, the like, book club re, re, reception. Um, this book, I mean, the book um, has been very nicely compared um, to The Great Gatsby. And I think it's largely because it's, got a, it's, it's, it's about affluent people who live in Long Island. Um, but when I was writing the book, I thought, uh, well, that's not the, the Long Island that I know, because if you know Long Island, well, there's the Gold Coast, which is totally different, and then there's uh, the, and, which is, and, then, and then there's the like Ham Hamptons, which is which is where I was from. Um, but in the sense that it is about these affluent people, but also um, it has a first-person na na narrator who's kind of uh, on the on the the kind of uh, the edges of the of the action. Um, but the main characters in the in the book are are um, Maddie, uh, who is this beautiful, wonderful woman who's married to a writer named ha ha Harry, um, and he's a very successful writer, and they have a lovely marriage, and they have a beautiful little boy whose name is Johnny, uh, and Maddie's best friend and longtime na neighbor um, Walter, who. Um, has been carrying a torch for Maddie um, his whole life. Uh, into this world comes a, another woman uh, who they first meet um, at, a, at a party. Um, she's young and attractive and uh, like impressionable and, and, and um, kind of falls in love with them both. Um, but as we all know, that kind of thing tends not to last. Uh, so, so um, she 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 makes her way into their into their world. So I'm gonna, my first reading um, will be about. Um, uh, I'm sorry. My 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 first reading is about um, uh, something that is kind of uh, similar to what I had kind of lived when I was when when I was a kid growing up on on East Hampton. I mean, growing up in. George Gapond in in his Hampton is, is taken kind of from things that I've done in my life, um, um, and in this scene there are also two other characters who are the best friends of, of Harry and Maddie, a couple named Tom and Sissy. Um, so I'm going to just find that little section. Sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> On a summer day, for us, there is only one way to go for a day at the beach, by, by canoe. My house 
uh, in Madeline's house, uh, sit side by side overlooking a um, brackish l l l lagoon that drains into the, the ocean. As children, we disdain the notion of being driven to the beach or even biking. We would pack up a battered old town canoe with towels, coolers, beach chairs, and whatever else we needed and set off like Lewis and Clark. It is nearly half a mile to paddle, and the winds could be stiff, sometimes forcing us to hug the shore, but the extra effort was always worth it. Unlike those people who came by car and sat crowded in clumps by the parking lot, we had a whole stretch of beach almost entirely to ourselves. There are two canoes now. We keep them on racks at my house, the paddles and mildew life jackets, which only Johnny ever wears, hanging from the thwarts. Harry and I hoist one canoe and walk it past the um, 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 bull, bulrushes uh, onto the old dock and into the water, our feet sinking in the, in the mire. Ned easily picks up the other one by himself. The wicker on the seats has long since given out and been replaced with crude and less comfortable wooden boards. Spiders dash out from the, the, the gunnels, and we scoop them out with our, our hands. Standing calf deep in the water, we load up the um, um, canoes and take our seats. From long custom, I sit in the stern and Maddie in the bow of one. Harry and Ned in, in the other. Johnny sits in front of his father while uh, 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 Sissy uh, reclines in the middle on a folding beach chair like uh, Cleopatra touring the Nile. Claire hops into ours and sits on a cooler. I feel like a freeloader, she says. Would it be all right if I got out and pushed? Nonsense, I say. Enjoy the ride. Only if one of you lets me paddle back, she says. The other canoe is far in um, fr 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 front of us. The, the trip to the beach is, is always a race. Johnny's, Johnny's and Sissy's extra weight, along with most of the gear, usually evens things out. But now, with Claire, we are losing ground. Madeline is intensely focused, reaching her paddle far out to draw as much water as possible, sending miniature whirlpools by, by me. She is very strong. I paddle hard, too, focusing more on speed than on um, steering. Oh, it's all my fault, says Claire, seeing how badly we are um, trailing. She has grasped the, uh, the, the urgency of the moment, yet can do nothing. That's it, she says, and takes off her shirt. Gracefully, she dives into the water, and we shoot forward. I wasn't kidding about um, pushing, she says. We feel her kicking behind the, 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 the canoe. Madeline yells, We're, we are gaining. It's true, we are. My arms are um, tiring, but I keep up the same pace as before. I won't let her down. Madeline is the most competitive person I know. <laughs> Get a horse, I yell to the other canoe as we pull within several lengths. Hey, that's um, cheating, cries Harry. No, no motors allowed. Faster, Daddy, faster, yells Johnny. I feel Claire stop um, pushing and see the other canoe now veering off to the right. Claire has reappeared by, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by the other canoe. She has grabbed the stern and is forcing it off course. No fair. Harry shouts as he begins to stand up. Uh, as he shrieks, don't even think about it, Harry. Laughing, he tries to grab for Claire, but she ducks up under the water. Uh, seconds later, her head pops up on the other side like a uh, seal's. The canoe rocks dangerously, but doesn't tip over. Ned is sitting in the bow with his paddle poised in the air, looking bemused. I want a do-over, he says. Madeline keeps paddling hard as we, um, as we pass them. My arms feel like they are going to fall off. And my back is on fire. But we keep going until we hit the sh shallows. There is no way we can lose now. I lean back, exhausted, as we glide to a stop, the nose of the canoe crunching into the sand. Maddie gets out and dances tri tri triumphantly in the water. 
Claire splashes up, and the two hug like tournament champions. So now that's the end of the first reading. I'm going to do one other one. Um, uh, this is a, I think it kind of speaks for, for itself. I mean, it, it, it's a sweet little story which uh, ha, ha, Harry reads to his, uh, which, which, which um, ha, ha, Harry makes up for his son at night. Um, he lets, when he when he puts him to bed. Um, Harry often made up stories for Johnny at bedtime. One of my favorites was about the um, Penguin King. Johnny was mad about penguins. We, he knew about all the different types: the uh, the Emperor, the uh, uh, Adeli, the, the Rock Hopper, where they lived, what they ate. Most nights at Johnny's bedtime, I would stand by the foot of the, of the bed with Maddie while, while, while Harry told the story. Each time, it was slightly different, but it always started out the same way. There was once a penguin king who lived at the South Pole with his family, Queen Penguina and all their princes and princesses. The princes and princesses were very cute. The penguin king was the biggest and strongest penguin, and even the sea lions were afraid of him. But the penguin king was sad. Why was he sad, Daddy? He was sad because he was tired of snow and ice and sea lions. He was tired of swimming. He was even tired of Queen Penguina and the princes and um, princesses. Oh no, that's terrible. So what did he do? One day he told Queen Penguina and the, the princes and um, princesses and all the other penguins at the South Pole if he wanted to see the rest of the, uh, of the world. He wanted to see uh, New, New York uh, City and France and Beijing and deserts and sky and sky and sky and sky and sky um, scrapers and trees. All the penguins started to cry and said, "Don't leave! Don't leave! You're our king." The princes asked, "Who will protect us from uh, sea, 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 sea lions? Who will feed us krill?" The um, princesses asked, "Who will keep our feet warm?" I've made up my mind, he, uh, he um, told them. I need to see uh, the world. They all cried as they watched him waddle off. He waddled f uh, farther than he had ever waddled be be before. He waddled for two whole days. He came to the ocean and saw a big ship. Perfect, he said. That's just what I need to take me to see the rest of the, uh, of the world. No, no, don't go on the ship, Johnny would interject. Well, too bad you weren't there to warn him, because that's exactly what he did. The penguin king waddled down to the ship and commanded the men there to take him aboard. They were very tall, but did what he told them. They took him on the ship and gave him lots of fish to eat. Sometime later, he couldn't tell how long for sure, the ship stopped. To, to, to his surprise, he was put in a box and taken off the ship. When the box was opened again, he was surrounded by other, 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 um, other um, penguins. There was a funny smell, like rotting fish. Where am I? He asked. You're in the zoo. Uh, the other penguins told him. What's a zoo? He asked. It's a prison. They, they told him. No one ever gets out of here. But I am the penguin king. He said. Not here you're not. Here you're just another penguin. What have I done, asked the penguin king. I should never have left my family and my kingdom. How could I be so stupid? He sat down and cried and cried. He missed Queen, uh, he missed Queen Penguina and all the penguin princes and um, <coughs> princesses. He would never see any of them ever again. 
He would never again protect them from sea, the, sea, the sea lions or go uh, swimming in the deep ocean or warm the feet of his uh, children. If only I could go back home, I'd never leave again, he said. <coughs> so what happens next, Daddy? What do you think should, 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 should happen? I think Queen Penguina and all the penguin princes and princesses become uh, nin nin ninjas and find a boat and, uh, and uh, re uh, rescue him. Harry laughs. Great idea. OK, so one night when he was dreaming of snow, there was a tapping on his cage. He looked up. It was Queen Penguina and the, and the princes and um, princesses. All his children were there, even 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 the youngest, who had grown now and lost their childish gray uh, feathers. They were all wearing black. Outside, the guards had all been tied up. "What are you doing here?" asked the Penguin King. "Run away, or or else they'll put you in the zoo too." He couldn't bear the thought of them suffering as he had. No, they won't, said Queen Penguina. She had never looked so beautiful. We have traveled for months to find you, and no one knows we are, are, are here. Come with us quickly, and we can all get away. So the Penguin King followed his beautiful wife and their children to the river, and they all jumped in. He was so happy to be uh, swimming again. And he gave his wife and children <clears throat> the biggest hugs in the whole world. I am so lucky to have such a wonderful family. I can't believe I didn't a, uh, a appreciate you all more. I promise uh -huh, uh -huh. I, I, will, I, will, I will never leave again. <clears throat> and, then, and then they all swam home. And they all lived happily ever after the end. Johnny almost always wanted to have a, a, a happy ending. It Harry was always willing to uh, uh, oblige. But one night, after Johnny had gone to bed, Harry confessed that he really thought it should have a different ending. How do you see it ending, sweetheart? asked Maddie. The Penguin King is left to rot in the zoo. Serves him right, too. If, 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 if you ask me. And that's the end of it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so uh, now I, Henry and I are going to um, have a little um, chat up here. And uh, um, I think after some point, if people have any um, questions, we are happy to take them. Thank you. companies um, buy books in this very dull way that you all may, all may have heard. There are these evil little people called literary agents and they say, oops, I should have said that. And um, there's no one in the room. Uh, and they send us books and we decide whether to buy them. And then the fun thing is we compete with other publishing companies and that's the way that goes. But this was a very, very unusual story um, because um, Charles is very friendly. I probably think probably before he started writing a book with someone who I've worked with in the company for 20 years, 20 no, 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 still excited, many, uh, uh, something like that. Um, Sharon Rosenblum over here called me up one day and said, um, please, 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 will you read my friend's novel? Those, that's about the worst sentence in the editor. <laughs> uh, I've heard it before, and it never turns out well at all. Um, and I gave in, said yes, because I'll do whatever Sharon tells me to do. And I read what was part one of this novel. And um, the only thing I can say is it was Sunday afternoon, and I think Sharon got an email from me that said, where is the rest of it? I want it now. And so, um, and then there formed a sort of relationship between um, Charles and, and Sharon and me, and um, then that ultimately led to us publishing this book, this one incredibly wonderful book. And, uh, and 
That's where that's that's where it all began. It was a fairy tale. I mean, <laughs> I've had people ask me, well, so Charles, you know, is it hard to get your book published? And I said, uh, yeah, it is. Except I was really lucky because I had this friend who knew, you know, the people and people at uh, women at William Morrow, you know, liked it, which is so cool. And 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 you know, um, and there's well, you know, you obviously knew people in the industry, Charles. And I go, well, yeah, but a lot of people know people in the, in the industry, and and. Um, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to get a um, book in print. I mean, and to very much Henry's point, you know, I mean, if you know someone, it can actually um, count against you. You know, because if you because you don't want to bother your friends, you don't want to waste their time. Um, but I felt very lucky, and, and Sharon was. Um, very sweet, and of course I had to twist her arm a little bit too. Cause, I mean, just as well, Henry said, you know, the worst thing you want to hear is like, she's like, Charles, you know, I get asked this all the time, and I don't want to disappoint you, don't get your hopes up, you know. It, it, you know I mean, the, I mean, the odds are, and but I'll read it anyway. You know, just, if you just promise not to ever, you know, bother me again, kind of. Thing. Uh, so I had my like one shot, you know, and it worked out incredibly well. Uh, I, I, I've been very lucky with. Um, uh, People that uh, that I've been able to work with on this book. I mean, Henry's been a wonderful editor. Uh, Sharon's been an incredible publicist. Um, I mean, the whole team at Waymaro has been incredible. Well, it's my so beloved to say this story didn't go. There was a somewhere along the road here where Charles did get one of those little evil people. Um, I mean, what a wonderful literary agent. <laughs> uh, and we were not the only publisher who did want this book. We were very fortunate to to win it at that moment when it came around for um, for submission. Well, let's just say no one was going to get this book, but, but we were not the only ones who wanted it. So. It was it was uh, it was extremely flattering. And it's been great. Um, but anyway, but we've had a lot of fun together, and and and, and uh, you know, it's so cool that the, the book. I'm sure um, this is my um, first book, so I've never kind of been through this before. Uh, you. No, it's the first book I ever edited too. No, no, I mean, uh, <laughs> Henry's been in the business for a long time. He has uh, edited, edited a lot of major books, so you know, uh, um, you know, uh, um, I'm sure uh, he's. You know, I mean, he's been to this. Um, um, rodeo a couple of times. It's my um, very first time, so it's still pretty, it's still, still really cool. Well, maybe we would get to, if you guys have any questions, we can answer some of them. But I, 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 I would say also, Charles was, um, since we're up here, the whole point of being up here is to flatter each other. Charles right? <laughs> was, was a really wonderful editor, uh, author to work with because, um, you know, I think uh, I. I I recently referred to myself to authors as um, uh, the, the provoker, the, um, the person who says, well, what's, what, why would you do this, and why would you do that, and this sort of thing, and usually, um, uh, well, I've been asked on occasion, you must love it when the author does exactly what you tell them to do, and I pause and go, no, I hate it when they do exactly what I tell them to do, and Charles was one of the better authors who, uh, basically, I said, um, d do this, and he took it away and um, and made it ten times better than whatever it was, whatever it was I had originally suggested he do. And when I would also poke him with questions, he would um, poke him, poke him with questions like, why would this character do this instead of coming back to me with some smart alecky answers? Some authors do. He would he would take that and um, move it up to another level and take the story, add new dimensions to it that if didn't necessarily make that thing happen that I was questioning, but in, evolve it into another place. So. You know, we, we had a lot of fun. I mean, I mean, I mean there was, uh, um, um, uh, I mean, there were, I mean, from my point of view, I think the editing process went very, very smoothly, smoothly. I mean, there wasn't, I mean, this was not a book that I think needed a ton of work. No, I mean, mean, which was great. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure that there are writers who do need a very heavy hand. Um, and, but this one, I mean, it kind of came. It just it kind of came and came out of it. Uh, and 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 you know, there were. I mean, I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted the book to be like from day one. Uh, I mean, I knew where I wanted to actually go with this, and it, was, it had been a plot line that I had in my head for a very long time. So. I had been able to kind of 
to, to think about it for years. Um, and so I was finally able to get it down on paper. And it, it took me 10 years to actually write it. Um, but it, 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 took me, it took me 10 years before I started actually writing it. Um, because I had a full-time job and I you know, had kids and, 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 and you know, I just didn't have the time and I didn't have the courage. You know, and you know, those are two things which we rarely have e e e enough of. Uh, I mean, and, and uh, I mean, we can always find the time, though. Right? <coughs> we find the actual um, courage. Well, that's a little harder. And, and, and I, I did it in this case because um, it was something that I, I really wanted to write. I, I had an idea that I thought would would, uh, would be great. And it was also something that I, I had. When I was younger and I graduated from college, I wanted to write, and I, I tried to write a novel, and, and, and I never got published. And you know, I felt um, kind of gun shy afterwards. Um, you know, you think, okay, well, I spent a year of my life on this. Uh, I have nothing to show for it. Um, you know, I, I came out of it with uh, the arrogance that a lot of young people feel. So, of course, I'm going to write a book. It's going to be fantastic, you know. Um, and of course, you know, I got shot down, shot down, and no one wanted it, and I felt really depressed, and and, and I and I really, I actually doubted whether, whether I could ever actually write a book. But it was one of those things, and you know, when you when you know that it's something you always that, that you always want to do, even if you may not think it might be as good as you want it to be, I, I knew I had to come back to this at some point, and so I really wanted to give it one last shot. And luckily, uh, um, I was able to write a book that uh, Sharon, you know, uh, saw the uh, promise in and took it um, to Henry, and, and you know they made it real. Um, but you know, uh, I mean, if it hadn't happened, and I was, you know, and, and I, 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 I had written the same book, but no one had looked at it, I mean, I'd be very impressed. I mean, it would really stink. Um, <laughs> And, 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 you know, I, mean, I, was, I, I enjoyed my um, career. I mean, I was in the, you know, I was in the magazine.com world for a long time, and I was uh, an editor there, but, but, this, but this is what I was wanted to do. And the fact that I've actually had the chance now at the age of 49 to be able to begin a new life is incredibly cool. Uh, and, and, and I couldn't have done it without you guys. So, well, you know. if, the, if you don't mind, let me ask you, I'd love to, well, I'd love to ask you a question. Sure, no, no, sure. I don't think we've ever, I've ever asked you before. There are, uh, there, are, there are a number of wonderful aspects of your book. I have to say the one thing that appealed to me from the very beginning, so how this all happened, was you have an incredible knack with characters. In fact, I often read novels, and I get to this point where you go, oh my God, which, who was that? Now, I, can't, I absolutely never had a problem in your book because every character from even the sort of, sometimes I refer to the C-level characters, the B-level characters, the A-level characters, everyone had a, they were distinct. I never had a question remembering them. How did you do that? Where, how does that come to you? So. Uh, okay, um, just a natural gift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's I think that um, you know I I, I, I um, wanted to I, mean, I knew the characters I wanted to write and the characters that I liked particularly and the main character even though there are even though there are people who may not like all, 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 all the characters I tried to write characters that were actually real like real people real humans I mean, not based on real people but that, that, but I tried I tried to make them as you know, as, as actually rounded and as deeply flawed as we all are. Um, but also, I liked them all. I mean, I liked the people that I actually wrote about. And so when you like the people you are, you are actually writing about, and even if they're evil and horrible, you can still kind of like them. I mean, the uh, same way that, you know, when, uh, I mean, the same way that uh, John uh, Milton obviously had the most amount of fun Writing about uh, Satan, 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 right? I mean, I mean, in like, in like um, Paradise Lost. I mean, that's great stuff. Paradise Regained, not so much. I mean, I mean, there's a reason why one work is better known. And, and and clearly, it is fun to write about dark characters, but I don't really 
write about dark characters in the sense, but but I want to try to write about characters I kind of want to spend time with that I would have enjoyed. And so it was fun for me to write about them. Um, and, and I think if I had ever gotten tired of writing about any of them, I may not have uh, had as much fun. I may not have actually been able to do as good a job. You mentioned in the, uh, you know, I think you're right. One of the reasons that we started and other people picked up on it without, with us prompting them is the comparison to The Great Gatsby. I, you know, I think you're wanting to distance yourself from that as well. But I think one of the primary reasons is that is your, um, your narrator who, I might even say is my favorite character in the book. How did you decide to um, use that, um, pardon me for using the word device, but sure, that? Sure. Um, well, I, th I mean, um, I knew the story I wanted to tell. I, I had the concept of Harry and Maddie and um, Claire, so I knew there was going to be this kind of love, this like love uh, tri triangle. Um, but to write about it from any of their points of view, I think, would have been very hard. Um, to write about it from a uh, like impersonal, a uh, third person voice, I, I just didn't feel comfortable with that. Um, but I love the idea of doing it in a um, um, first person. I mean, there is a degree of like real freedom that you have when you're writing in the first, in the first person. And so I, I kind of came up with the idea of a Walter type uh, who is kind of on the outside uh, uh, looking in. And, and, and then as I developed him, uh, I kind of got to like him more and more and more. And the fun thing about him, too, and we were talking about this upstairs, is that um, Walter and, and Harry are kind of like my yin and yang. Um, I didn't actually understand that until after I was done with it. Um, but because I could relate to the two characters very well, and both of them have a lot of me in it, um, I was, I mean, there's a lot of Walter in me. Uh, and and, and, and you know, not always the best parts. And the same thing we said before ha ha Harry. So I, I, and I, I, I felt very comfortable with them both. Um, well, the, the, I'll get you to speak about something, just staying on that. Um, but I'll just say one of the things that I think is the, your biggest achievement in this book. You speak of the fact that uh, there's a voice issue in this book, in that Walter tells the story, but if you notice, if you're in large parts of the book, it actually does read as if it's in third person. And you know, I won't reveal anything here about it, but Walter knows everything. He's the person who knows everything, um, but um, but he's not there at all times. I mean, that's in the, that it was in the, it's in, it's to me one of the cleverest, biggest achievements in the book as how well that works. Thank you. It was um, it was actually edited. Very well, <laughs> <laughs> but no, but 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 assuming the, the 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 question of how does Walter know what he knows is something that people have asked me, and and you know there are uh, little clues that we've left throughout the book as to kind of how he knows what he knows, um, you know, and 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 but at, at the same time too though Walter is a, I mean, he's got a. Um, dog in the fight too. I mean, this, I mean, he's not a purely uh, like a personal guy. So, so, so there are. Uh, I mean, he's a. I would say he's a relatively um, unbiased an editor, but he is uh, human. So therefore, of course, he's biased, and of course, he will kind of feel uh, certain 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 things and lean certain ways. Um, and so we can take most of what he says, you know, as the truth. But you know, he does bend things at times. Uh, we um, we've had a lot of fun with the, the marketing part of this, being able to say the following: from the Hamptons to Pat to Rome to Paris to New York, uh, you know, the Tony Upper East Side of New York. Um, do you set out to do that on purpose, or? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, um, <laughs> well, for, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean uh, for um, two reasons. One, because it's what I know. I mean, it's lucky. I mean, I mean, I, I, I was lucky enough to be raised in, on the Upper East Side. I, I, I was lucky enough to be raised um, 
uh, with a weekend place out on Long Island. Um, I mean, I've, I've spent parts of my life in Europe and I'm and, and, um, and comfortable in, you know, in, in that world. Um, but also, I wanted to write about a book that kind of interests me, but I thought people, you know, if I wanted to write about it, you know, say something taking place in uh, Des Moines, it not, might not be quite as interesting. I mean, you know, not to say anything against Des Moines, but I mean, but frankly, given a choice, getting from Des Moines. Well, I, uh, I think it was uh, like a subtle thing. Um, you know, but but the point is, I mean, you know, I mean, when we read a book, we I mean, we want to be able to feel like we're kind of being taken so that sort of sort of somewhere else. And would it be nice if we were taken somewhere that we actually want to go? You know. Um, so yes, I mean, I, I mean, right about Paris. Well, I mean, boy, I mean, most people like it. <laughs> I mean, Paris is a pretty great place. Um, uh, Rome is pretty wonderful too. Uh, New York has its good things. Um, you know, so 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 I wanted to write about what I knew, but also about what I thought people would find uh, enticing. Um, you know, you, you you want to be able to give people things that they enjoy, um, and, and 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 so I wanted to have uh, lots of calories in this meal, if you will. Um, you know, I was not going to um, try to skip and say turkey bacon. Mm -hmm. You know, um, use uh, the like low fat butter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wanted to kind of really make this taste good and, and make it as you know, kind of rich and fun as possible. Well, you know, that's an interesting because I just remember what our biggest fight was in the Paris section. I said I had to say mm -hmm. Charles. Four restaurants they go to, not <laughs> six. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there there was a whole scene said like a like a whole other restaurant in Paris, you know, and and and, and you were spot on. So, you know, it's like a travel log at this point. Um, yes, if someone would like to read his outtakes from the yeah. novel, there are two restaurants and yeah, two I, meals, which I had, had and it sounds spectacular, but you know. <laughs> right. you know, and, and, you know and, and, and but so but so that's why I chose. I should write about this because, again, I mean, if I had been raised in uh, Des Moines or Mexico City or 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 that was their beautiful, wonderful novel. Um, um, but you know, you look like what like um, William uh, William uh, Kennedy did with uh, you know all, all, all was it? It's uh, it's uh, say New York is uh, Albany, right? Yes. So 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 you know right. But 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 a lot of his books are. There. I mean, Albany, some people don't care for. Um, <laughs> uh, but, and when it's um, AR, a um, Grimmy does a lot of uh, his work set up in like um, Buffalo. Again, I mean, um, if you, you find the uh, milieu that works for you, and if you can make it your own, you, I mean, you can make um, Buffalo fantastic. You can make all of Albany rich and great. Well, for instance, Charles is working on an amazing novel now about Darianne, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're all in it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you do mention Darianne in the book. Yes. Yeah. You know yeah. you're coming to <laughs> <there. laughs> <laughs> And you haven't run me out of time yet? Yeah. No, uh, excuse me, I put that in the book. <laughs> <laughs> it was, did you mention okay. it? Okay, um, I, I know it was, I just don't remember what, yeah. what kind It's in the index. <laughs> <laughs> Did you at any point, because you've got basically two endings in the book? Well, oh, I, don't, I don't know if people have read the book. Well. Uh, I mean, uh, probably. I mean, much I'd love to answer, and if I want, you know. Zip that. Um, yeah. There are actually three endings, but I'm trying to think out the yeah. way I read it. The, um, yes, I'm sorry. No, um, yes, I know you're going to think this is such a typical comment for me. Um, he doesn't know that. That's yeah. true. The ladies from my book group will know this. Of course you guys. I guess because, you know, as you're talking about these wonderful places, I'm thinking, what a great film this would be. Mm. You know, being filmed in New York, the Hamptons, Paris, Rome. Oh. There he is. There he is. <laughs> and where he where you be filmed, right? Um, <laughs> right, all the great cities. Um, <coughs> has it been picked up at all? Or Not yet. Um, I mean, there have been a couple of nibbles. Um, but nothing, you know. And I we'll help you cast it, because we do that in every, and we do that in every book room. You know, that's been fun. I mean, that's been a fairly common uh, question that people have had. Visually, visually. Asked in terms of, you know, oh, who would you actually, you know, want to see it in? And I would say, 
I really don't know because you never know how things work. And you know, they might choose someone who was really wrong for a part, but if they're a like big enough star, it doesn't matter. You know, um, I mean, you know, I mean, if somebody who's like really short, you know, or bald or whatever, you know, I mean, like there was that Tom. Um, Cruise film that just came out, the Jack. Uh, oh, Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher. Reacher. Now, now I've read a couple of those books, and I don't know if anyone else has read any of the Reacher books. Yeah. But Jack Reacher is six foot five. <laughs> <laughs> and they, if there's one thing we know about Tom Cruise, he's not six foot five, right? So it just seems kind of silly. But hey, you know, I'm sure that when um, the author got the. Uh, um, Check from the uh, movie studio. He didn't care. <laughs> yeah, so he didn't I care. once heard a story that Pat Conroy was asked what he thought of the film adaptations of his movies, uh, and he said, "I find it incredibly painful, but the checks kept helping me get over it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it'd be, but it'd be fun. I mean, you know, I mean, there are. I mean, uh, the headmaster of my daughter's school loved the book, and that's all he wants to talk about is. Who would you cast, Charles? <laughs> and, and it's so sweet, you know, and, and he's so into it. Um, but I, I just try to stay away from that. I mean, I because I don't want to be kind of known as well. I really want to have X to play the part because then, you know, if X hears that, that oh, you didn't want me or you didn't want me, you know, I just. You know. But thank you. I mean, I mean, it's very really, and it would be fun. I, I'd love to know what I feel. We'll do that anyway next year. Yeah. yeah. Well, please do. We'll cast it. We'll cast it. We'll cast it. Well, no. Let me know. Let me know. Sorry. I think it's really interesting that you were saying how much you liked the characters. Yeah. Because I liked, I, I read the book, and I liked all the characters. And I just happened to be talking the other day with someone about, they said, have you ever read Elmore Leonard? And I said, yeah, but his characters, I hated every single one of them. And I'm wondering how he wrote with those people who were all pretty despicable. Well, I think, I think, fun, I think he had fun with them. You think he was in... Well, because, because, his, because his books have this kind of black humor. Yeah, they he, do, he, but he, it's still... He, would be so you want to make these, these, like these people, people as awful as possible, <laughs> which I, I think could be fun. You know, if you're picking, you know, a guy who's uh, like a drug dealer or or, or, or a murderer or whatever, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean or a uh, like mafioso, I mean, I mean, but if you really have fun and you turn it into a, like a rich character with, yeah, I, I mean, you could certainly have a lot of fun. Yeah, but I mean, most of them have no <coughs> redeeming features, and I like to read books about right. people that I like. Right, right, I really right. don't like reading books right. about people I don't like, that I would not right, enjoy no, I reading that. at all. Well, is it right, right, I mean, I mean, I mean if you're going to look at people, but I think because his books are meant to be funny, comic, you kind of take away, I mean, yeah. I mean, if, if it was uh, a serious book, Mm -hmm. and, and as though any of these characters were actually being held up as in, I, I just read a like Martin, a, like Martin, a Martin Amos book, um, his most recent one, uh, and none of the characters in there had any appeal to me at all. Okay. He was a great writer, and he writes about really awful people really well. You know? <laughs> um, but again, I mean, I mean, I would no longer, I mean, I would no more want to be in the same room yeah. with most of those people. You know, um, and, and certainly they would uh, stand out here and there. Well, I like all your guys. They're people that I would have enjoyed meeting. Uh -huh. You know, they, they were they were real, and it was very very. Well, they nice. were locked in my uh, in, in my in my in my like, um, basement for the, for the past few years. I should have let them out now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I was really uh, inspired by your novel, especially considering the fact that it's your first novel. Um, and the other thing is. Many years ago, I had been in the Hamptons. I lived there when I went, went on for my Master of Fine Arts degree, and later got an MA degree in creative writing, too. So I'm real, I haven't read the book yet, but I know how difficult it is to get a, a novel published, especially your first novel. So I'm really looking forward to reading okay. it, and, and I, gotta give, I have to give you a lot of compliments for pursuing. The other thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, having edited novels myself, and um, I used to be in corporate, then I transitioned as a writer. I retired, and I decided to become a writer. Um, how did you find what? How did you find writing the book in terms of how you did it on a daily basis? Oh, did that's you a great question. Or? I love writing. It. Yeah. Um, but I pushed myself um, because I had a full-time job. I had kids. 
What I do is I, I woke up every day at 5, 5, 5, 5, 5 a.m. I would write until 7, 7 o'clock, which is when I then had to get my kids up, get them ready to um, go to school and get them um, breakfast, and I had to get them, and also I had to get ready myself to go to work, and I had to drive my daughter to school, you know, I mean, and there was a lot to do in that one hour. Yeah. But I gave myself those um, two hours every day, and I loved it because it was quiet, and it was dark, and there was no one around saying, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. You know, um, I didn't have to change any, any, like, any na na nappies because my kids were, you know, older at that point. I mean, I could never have done that when my kids were very young, you know, because if, you know, you're up and they're up, right? Um, and, and, um, uh, and I would work on uh, um, weekends and, 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 you know, and on, and on, and on uh, holidays as well, which drove my wife crazy, you can imagine. You know, because she was like, yeah, Charles, really? You get um, two weeks off a year and you're spending it doing this, and I'm just, I'll meet you at the beach. Okay. I'll, I'll be there at noon. Um, and, you know, I would get a, like, um, pretty look from her, but she understood. Um, but, you know, but it, it was, I mean, it, it was fun, and I, I still am like, you know, I don't wake up at five, I wake up at uh, like six, and I give myself a little bit more time to sleep. But, uh, um, but, but I like writing like and, 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 and I like the quiet, I like the peace. Um, and because I was a uh, journalist for so long, I had the extra discipline to be able to sit down and to write. You know, um, because when you're writing on um, deadline, I mean, you have got to get it in. I mean, you, you know, you can't you, you can't like afford to spend the time trying to hunt around for just the right word. You know, I mean, you've got to fight. And so I learned how to do that, and so I learned how to actually write and just kind of not, kind of um, not actually get in, in my in my in my in my own way. It's ironic because we we share the same writing pattern because I get up awful early in the morning too. It's great time, and I find it's the most quiet period. The other thing I find kind of ironic is the fact that I, as I said, I lived in the Hamptons when I was going on for my MFA, and I lived in a little cottage too, and there was this big mansion in front of where I lived. And I lived behind, and I used to go to the beach, and I used to go down to Southampton right. and, and Quag, and you know. So I became very familiar with the Hamptons. So as I said, I'm looking forward to reading your book. Great, well, thank you. I would enjoy it. Thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me about uh, your experience at Wesleyan and what influence this had on uh, what you've done for the rest of your life. Uh, are you involved with the school, sir? <laughs> I, I have a child that went to graduate from Wesleyan. There are other people in the room. Okay. That's uh, the same. And <coughs> Wesleyan is exactly the most popular school in Durian, Connecticut. Right. Okay. Well, um, I was there for only um, two years. That gives you any idea. Um, <clears throat> I had gone there because I had originally, uh, I had originally wanted to paint, and um, they were meant to have a good painting program. And also, it was a good school. And uh, the boarding school that I graduated from had sent a lot of people there. And, um, you know, it was a. I mean, uh, I, I spent the entire first year of my uh, time at Wesleyan in, uh, in uh, actually um, driving into uh, New York on the weekends. Um, so I wasn't around much. Uh, the second year I um, spent more time there, and, and I uh, it wasn't for, it wasn't really for me. Uh, it's a very it's a very, very popular school. I mean, people who go there are very very bright. It's a little liberal for me. Uh, and I was coming out of a fairly liberal background, um, so it was almost too liberal at times. Um, but also that was a long time ago, so I, mean, I can't really comment about it now. Uh, but, you know, I have very good um, friends from there still. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I was very relieved to actually get in, if that means anything. Um, so, I, I mean, I only applied to two colleges. I applied to Wesleyan and to uh, Reed. Out in, in, in Oregon. Yes, right out of yeah. in Oregon, and and, and uh, uh, I knew I was in there because I got a letter of a, of, a, of acceptance before I even actually sent in my application. <laughs> um, I think it's become a lot more um, competitive since then. Um, <coughs> but anyway, look, I mean, I, 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 I um, um, uh, Wesleyan was um, I was there for only two years and. Move on. Anyone else? 
Uh, yes, sir. This is on the subject, and I always come, you can ask my book remembers, I always come up with some weird. But I thought of the cities, the major, the Rome, Paris, wherever they went. I thought that was a vehicle to enable the characters involved to do what they did because they had stepped away from their places where everybody knew them, where, so they were like in a dream. They were well, it could have been world. in Minsk. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, but these, are, these, are, these, are, these are glamour. These right. are the glamour cities. Right. Right? When people talk about them, like, Europe, where do they want to go? They want to go to the high end of Paris, the high end of Rome, the whatever, you know. Sounds good. But anyway, I didn't know. <laughs> so that's really way off, that wasn't. No, no, no. I mean, I, I wanted. I mean, I mean, if if if, if Harry and Maddie had stayed in New York, not moved to Rome for a year, uh, who knows what might happen? Mm -hmm. Could have gone to Boston, but right. Rome, exactly. <laughs> Rome and Paris. Uh, they they let you. You're somewhere else. You know when you travel. I mean, I do. I walk all over the place and places I would never go in New right. York. Oh yeah. You know because you you feel safe. You feel away. A cocoon. Yeah. Well, you're you're you just feel like you're safe and you're better. It's a better place. I don't know. But that's what I thought. I thought it was a vehicle to en enable them. Well, yes. Well, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. And I mean, I mean, you, you, they serve both that function as well as to, you know, to to as a, to um, make it fun too. Yeah. Glamour. Yeah. For the movie. Yeah, for the movie. Yeah. <laughs> If you want me to check out any of those cities, I'll look for it. <laughs> <laughs> she'll scout, she'll scout the sets. I can go scout the sets. The rest of the <laughs> We do have time for one more question, if anyone has. Um, oh, I, I was just sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, the, two more. Uh, two, uh, two more. Do you mind, sir? Uh, uh, ladies first. Oh, uh, mine's quick. Are you writing on another, are you working on yes, another novel? Yes. Is there I can't, anything you can tell us about it? I can't. I talk about it because I do not want to editor in this Not I once. Read it, so I'm... Not once. I never thought about it. I mean, I have read this Gerald, but I never <coughs> once thought about Jatsky um, or more like or more like Fitz Gerald and I was actually writing the book. Because I mean, as I said before, I mean, I come from a different part of Long Island. You know, which might seem odd to people who aren't from there, but it'd be like saying it'd be like uh, comparing Darien to. Uh, uh, Lakeville, you know, it's a different part of the state. You know, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, yes, it's in Connecticut. And to maybe people who are from uh, Des Moines, it might seem kind of like a, like a very small difference. But um, but uh, um, but but to, but if you're from the Hamptons, the Gold Coast, I mean, it's a lot easier to get to the Gold Coast, which is where the whole um, East Egg and West Egg is. Um, we have Wall Street that you guys all, all, all know that anyway. But, but yeah, no, I, mean, I never thought about it. Of course. Once people began to review the book and they began to mention Gatsby, my first thought was, oh shit. <laughs> uh, because I can see why they were making that um, comparison. And also, too, I knew that I would, in, I would in, in, inevitably look bad. <laughs> oh, I mean, can, I just, can I just say something about that, too? That, um, that, that would, when we all read the novel, and it was very, it, it sort of spread a little bit like wildfire in the company, uh, people really loving it. And we always, I mean, I've said to Teddy, I, I mean, I sort of get exhausted in book publishing, of like, that a book can't ever be a book, it's always got to be like another book. And we all searched, we searched, I mean, I, I f found Charles Ray to be very much like one of my favorite writers, John Irving, but I, I but you know, everyone's just so what is this like? And, and finally it came down to, and even I hesitated a minute with the great Gatsby, are we setting this guy up? So to Charles' defense, we thrust that upon him more than I think you were right. saying, I'm Fitzgerald, you okay. know, so. I mean, talk about like setting yourself um, to fail, right? I mean, boy, I mean, I mean, I would not be that you know, bold, I assure you. Uh, and you know, I mean, I, uh, I mean, um, and and you know, I, I mean, of course, that's one of the greatest books ever written. So I'm, you know, 
And if people are even bold enough, I mean, if people even want to compare me in the same breath, I don't think it's deserved. But, you know. But now I feel worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Did you ever, during this process of writing this book, get blocked or stopped to the point where you felt like putting it down and not picking it up again? I did have one block period when um, well, it was over uh, the summertime, and it was a couple of years ago, and my son was doing a lot of basketball, and my um, entire schedule just got thrown to the wind. I mean, I was going to tournaments, and you know, I mean, I, I mean, you, but you guys know what that's like. You know, all of a sudden your kids come first, and you got to like, but I'm going to stay here and write. You know, that doesn't work. You know, um, so I was taking care of him, and then you know, but and also it was good. He gave me a couple months off. But you knew you'd go back. Oh yeah, I, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, are we good, Aaron? Or anybody? If anybody wants to ask me afterwards, uh, 